is that as we go along about anything we talk with, um, the, the level of the mind or the right mind is where the healing is going to be. And even when we get to behavior, you know, any type of behavior, if we feel personally responsible for behavior, in other words, there's one point where Jesus says, you know, if you raise body thoughts to the level of mind, they are, they're out of my control. In other words, and you will feel guilty for them. Now this is pretty subtle, so we have to take, take this pretty slow and take a look at this. It seems very much like we, the mind is responsible for the behavior. It seems as if everyone here is, is a human being or a person who has decisions and can decide what to do behavior-wise. You know, I can decide to come to this meeting tonight. I can decide to stay home and watch the TV. I can decide to get up and go to the restroom, or I can decide to cough or sneeze. You know, it seems like the mind is directly responsible for the behavior. I can choose, for example, it seems to say I'm going to raise my right arm. I could choose to say I'm going to let, put my right arm down. You see how there seems to be a direct connection between choosing and behavior. What Jesus is saying in the Course is, is that, that really the only choice you have is at the thought level. And your behavior is like an automatic byproduct. It automatically flows from your thought, from your choice that you make at a mind level. So in a sense, you really don't have choice, in the ultimate sense, at the behavioral level. Now that's pretty steep because the way that we perceive the world, it sure seems like that. You know, it's like, hey, I can decide if I'm going to wear the green shirt or the blue shirt. I can decide if I'm going to have the hot dog or the taco. You know, it really seems like we have choice between forms. But Jesus is basically coming from the Course and is saying, well, remember what I've taught you, that all form is projected. In other words, the world is a projection or illusion. And you're, you're choosing between illusions. Do I buy the blue car or the red car? You know, Jesus is saying, you know, is the choice between illusions a real choice? You know, what what do you have when you choose between illusions? You know, a <laughs> better illusion, a worse illusion. Yeah, the mind really. That's why I believe it can choose that way because it's ordered all the illusions. Mm -hmm. You see, it's made a hierarchy of illusions, and it believes that it will pursue the good illusions and avoid the bad illusions as it's judged it. But what, what we're getting at, though, is basically, what, if we keep going into this, what it's going to come down to is that really the only choice we have every instant is between the right mind and the wrong mind, between the Holy Spirit and the ego. Now, what's in between that decision in our minds and what seems to be this world? There's not, it's nothing in truth, but what it is, is I, I kind of use the analogy sometimes of thinking about the mind like... Um, like the World Trade Center, we'll say, for example, okay? In the basement of the World Trade Center, way down at the bottom of the basement, is where the ego and the Holy Spirit are, okay? There's this brilliant light, you know, that is the Holy Spirit, this gentle reminder, you know, God's not mad. You could never separate from Him, you know? That's the silliest idea that could ever be. It's ridiculous. The Holy Spirit is this gentle reminder that's in the basement. And the mind, the ego, is on top of it in the sense that it's right down there with it, but the ego is the belief that we have separated from God. And all the floors of the World Trade Center are these dark floors and false beliefs because the mind is so afraid of the Holy Spirit. The deceived mind is so terrified of that light that it's like stacked on 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 14, 15, 16, 48, 49, 50, you know. You can imagine the fear that this mind feels if it's so afraid of the Holy Spirit. And basically, if you know, you kind of have to put it into a little bit of a context that, you know, it's like in the, the 500s it says, into eternity where all is one, there crept a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. That the mind, in, in a metaphorical sense, this is still like a little storybook, this is our, our genesis, of the Course, <laughs> you know, in the Genesis we have, in the beginning God created that. Well, the Course tells us, you know, that, you know, into eternity we're all as one that crept a tiny idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. And in taking this idea seriously, believe that, that separation from, 
from the Father was really possible was a horrifying idea. And literally, the projected world arose to hide or to cover over, to be like a hiding place, kind of like in the Garden of Eden, you know, where they, they grabbed the, the fig leaves and everything to hide, that, that this world was made as a hiding place. So not only do we have all those stacks of dark beliefs, all those floors in the mind that were made to like cushion or be a barrier from that light, but then we've got the roof. And in our analogy here, we'll call the roof where the flag is blowing. That's the world. So now what we have is what's in between that decision where in the basement we have the Holy Spirit and the ego down there that we have on the roof what seems to be what most people would perceive as life in this world. I'm a teeny little person in a vast world, this huge sphere called Earth, and I can't, I'm battling for survival, trying to keep my head above water, I'm trying to, to make it. There are all kinds of huge external forces like fires burning out in California that are burning down houses, there's hurricanes, there's tornadoes. You can see up on the surface it's like a nightmare because the mind has forgotten this warm, glowing, wonderful light in the basement, and it's like it, it has all these false beliefs, and yet we still have moments where we feel instants of love. In other words, that light is so powerful in the basement that it keeps sending up what the Course calls miracle impulses. You know, the Holy Spirit is so powerful that those, that those impulses still come through all those dark layers. And, and the only problem is, is that when they reach the surface, um, Jesus calls them their distorted miracle impulses. So they come out in real funny, distorted ways when they come out in, in, at the top of the building. You know, it's like we're we're still craving for that light and that love, but but we're like once we believe we're a little teeny person, we're running around trying to find the right human being, trying to find the perfect partner, trying to find the perfect job, trying to find you know seeking outside ourselves, trying to find among the images and the idols, we're trying to find what will complete us. But really, what we, we know deep down inside is that light, the Holy Spirit, is a reminder of, of the Christ, is what our true completion is. So, to get back to our, our thing of levels, all of those levels and layers that I talked about, all of those levels in the World Trade Center are part of the wrong mind. That's the darkened mind. And the spark of light is, that's in the basement is, is the Holy Spirit and the ego. Now, the only thing the Course the, the course says is the way out, the way to escape, is basically you got to go down to the basement. You know, you got to go with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you got to go down into the basement. And as you, the more you go down, the more you go down through the level, so to speak, and you, and you approach the basement, the ego shrieks. The ego is like, you swore you'd never come down to the cornerstone here, you know, this this basic cornerstone. You swore you'd never come down and lift it up. And if anybody has read the, the obstacles to peace, you know, if you if you read the fourth obstacle, that's probably the biggest description of the fear of God, you know, where the ego is is saying, You swore you'd never, you know, look up. You know, you, you keep your head down, keep keep in the darkness. And so basically the Course keeps teaching us that the basement is like the mind and that's where the Holy Spirit and the ego are. They're just two thoughts in our mind. But through defense mechanisms like projection and um, all kinds of mechanisms, the mind keeps trying to throw the, the guilt and the pain out onto the world. In other words, that's where the scapegoating takes place. That's where the blaming takes place. Always blaming something up here on, on the surface instead of going down into the mind. So. One, the last thing I'm going to add on to this before we maybe move, shift at it from another angle is basically when I've used this analogy of the, the World Trade Center, you know, with all these floors and everything, you know, a lot of times the idea is, oh my gosh, this is depressing. <laughs> this sounds really depressing. It's like, good, the Holy Spirit's there reminding me, but if, if I got 50, 50 floors to go through and I got to turn on every light in every room and every closet before I can get down, you know, to the to the basement and turn that light on, and this is going to take me forever. Well, the good news is, the course is good news for this too, is that I, I, I use the metaphor of the master switch. There is a master switch. There is a holy instant that literally, if you can hit the master switch, it literally lights up 
the whole thing at once. Okay, and that's what when when Jesus gave us the course, he really is. If you read a lot of those passages, you can tell he's go, he's helping us go for that master switch. You know, when he's in in the workbook, he'll ha he'll say things like, you know, sink down beneath the clouds. You know, perhaps today. You know, you know he keeps he's talking about. It. He's really speaking to us as if this very day, and this very instant, we're going to be able to go down in our minds and hit that switch. It's going to turn the whole thing on. It's going to be the real world. You know, he he really he's trying to help us get clear about this confusion between form and content. Form being up there on the top of the World Trade Center and content being in the basement. So that every time we come together and we go into talk about a problem or whatever, usually when we first think of we have a problem, we perceive it in terms of form. Right? It's pretty common. I don't have enough money. I've got rent <laughs> next month. Or I've got an ulcer that I've got to treat. Or I've got this, this man or this woman at work that's driving me nuts, you know, that I can't handle. You know, or one of those things, in any way, shape, or form, we describe our problems and we define them in terms of form. And Jesus is basically saying that, that really, once again, the only problem you have is a thinking problem. Thinking being content in the mind. But until you can, can get at your thinking problem, you'll continue to think you continue to define your problems as being out there on the screen, on the projected screen. So that's kind of a, a quick synopsis of the level, and that maybe will give us a chance to, to go into some other areas. Come at the same thing, really, but come at it from some different angles. I think we can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> this describes it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hit the nail on that. <laughs> yeah. The thing, too, I think that uh, coming at the master switch, too, is kind of like, if you could think of the ego as like a, like a tree, where the ego itself, the belief that you could separate from God, is like the trunk. And then everyone knows what happens when you go up from the trunk. It's like the branches, more branches, more branches, twigs, leaves. There seems to be just all these fragmentations that take place from once you get away from the trunk. And basically, what the Course is teaching us is, the good news is, is that an illusion is an illusion is an illusion. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times an illusion fragments. As Robert Perry says, all, all different sizes of zero. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter if you multiply zero by a hundred or a million or a trillion, you still get zero. And I think all of us have looked around this world. I mean, you look at the commercials on TV, you look at this world with the billboards, it seems like <coughs> the images are just fragmenting at an unbelievable rate, you know? I mean, in the last couple of decades, look at with, with shows like MTV and VH1, <laughs> you know, you see these images flashing, you go down billboards, gosh, the news did not, I mean, you turn on the TV, it's like, you know, it's like images, noises, you know, that basically this is, if you can imagine this gigantic mirror that somebody pressed down on and started this cracking you know, and started to shatter into millions and billions and trillions of pieces. That's literally what this projected world is. And not only that, but there's a thought in the mind for every image. In other words, you know, we say microphone, um, rug, shoe. You know, when we were little kids, we learned to, to label things in the world, you know, ball, mommy, daddy. Then you get older and you go to elementary school, then you get into high school, then you get into college, and then you have a specialty and you start, if you're a doctor, you start labeling all these parts of the body and how they work together. You, know, you can see how the learning of the world is based on just labeling all these parts and then trying to figure out how they all work together. Really exhausting. So the exhausting for the mind. The mind is used to unity and wholeness. The mind is used to simplicity. You know, keep it simple. And it's trying to teach itself all of these parts. <laughs> it's very exhausting. So, in, um, I think it's Lesson 184, The Name of God is My Inheritance, Jesus describes this. You know, he describes in that lesson how you have a name for everything. And you, you try to put a little space between everything else and, and name it. And, and in that lesson, he calls that Phase 1. That everybody who comes to this world has to go through Phase 1. Phase 1 is you learn the world. Everybody who comes here has to learn the world. And then 
as we look at the course, the context of it later on, of course, phase two is unlearn 